Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Tablet. Today we have with us Dr. Arun George who have been specialized in oral and maxillofacial surgery. Let us welcome him to the program. Welcome doctor. Could you tell us your experience in the field of oral and maxillofacial surgery? Uh, oral and maxillofacial surgery is definitely a speciality uh, uh, after a uh, bachelor of dental surgery. It's a postgraduate program. It is basically related to the surgeries on the orofacial region. Oral means inside the oral cavity and maxillofacial, the word maxillofacial, maxilla means upper jaw and the face. So this, this specialty is basically related to surgeries related or probably inside the oral cavity and the face. Soft tissue structures and the bones are also involved. So doctor, we have received some mails okay. from the viewers, mainly from UA. So we will move on to the questions. Uh, sure. So the first mail is from Nazriya Ajman. What exactly is an oral and maxillofacial surgeon? And how does OMHS stand out from any other dental practice I can visit? So oral surgeons basically does procedures inside the oral cavity and the procedures, you know, on the over the face. Yeah. Routine okay. like, you know, trauma, maxillofacial injuries, uh, the implant procedures. Then a lot of minor oral surgical procedures we have, okay. including the routine tooth extraction, complicated tooth extraction. So it just goes. The other question that she has asked is, what should I consider to decide if dental implants are right for me? And where can I learn more about dental implants? And lastly, is age a factor in implant treatment? Age is not a definitely a not a criteria. If you okay. have... Uh, if the person is not medically compromised or the, if the patient, uh, if the person can fit enough to undergo any procedure, any surgical procedure, that person can definitely undergo a procedure for implant, implant surgery. Okay. The yeah. other question that she has asked is, where can I learn more about dental implants? Uh, the very best option is internet. You Google, you get almost all the information. Yes. Huh? You can. Uh, learn and you can probably know about various implant procedures, various implant systems and uh, and probably like a person from UAE, they will get all the information uh, regarding the nearby centers that does implants because implant is a procedure usually done in uh, dental clinic and a specialist who, a specialist who is uh, you know capable and or who is experienced enough to practice implants probably yeah. they will do so we can, she can consult a dentist the last question that she has asked is is age a factor in implant treatment age is not a major criteria okay. like if a person can if, if a person is fit enough to undergo any surgical procedure and if a person is healthy and uh, definitely they can go in for an implant procedure so now moving on to the next <laughs> mail it's from Nausha Dubai is it too late for a dental implant if my bone has already deteriorated? It is always better to place an implant on a sound, healthy bone. That is no doubt. Mm -hmm. But when you have a minimal bone, we have various options to mask it. Because we have there is something called bone grafts, then guided uh, bone regeneration techniques. So you can place an implant even if there is um, some minimal amount of bone you can manage by various other techniques like bone grafting and guided bone regeneration etc. Is it true that dental implant treatment is painful? Dental implant treatment is definitely not painful because it is usually done under anesthesia either local anesthesia or general anesthesia. If it is a one or two or a, if, it, if you are doing in terms of one or two numbers probably it is done under a good local anesthesia. So it is it is just like any minor oral surgical procedure. It is not painful. What options do I have for anesthesia at OMSH? We have uh, local anesthetic various local anesthetic techniques, nerve blocks, local infiltrations. We can even uh, t uh, give patients mild sedatives, then pre-anesthetic medications, anti-anxiety drugs. Patient with anxiety can give anti-anxiety drugs like atrazolam, clonazepam, etc. You can give. Should wisdom teeth be removed even if they are not causing any problem? And do each of my missing teeth require an implant? Wisdom teeth uh, removal is a debatable 
issue. If you have, if it is creating problem, definitely it has to go in for a removal because usually you know it is impacted. Impacted means if it is covered inside the bone. Uh, sometimes it creates uh, other problems. It can create cyst formation, or sometimes it causes adjacent tooth pain, caries, neurological problems. There are so many issues which requires removal of the wisdom tooth. And our current scenario. For most of you know the latest uh, our uh, recent generation people of our recent gen generation this tooth usually doesn't erupt to its normal position so such teeth has to undergo a surgical removal the other question that he has asked is how do dental implants preserve the bone to which they are attached and is it true that dentures and partials accelerate the deterioration of facial structures that first question is like you know whenever a person loses his teeth he has already, he has got a, a cavity inside where the tooth has lost. There is a cavity. So the bone normally undergoes, whenever a person loses his teeth, the bone undergoes resorption. That is, bone shrunks. Mm -hmm. So immediately if you can replace with an implant, because of the size of the implant and the overloading pressure, it maintains the structure of the alveolus. Alveolus is the basal bone which retains the tooth structure. So naturally, uh, if you replace an implant, wherever there is a missing tooth, it retains the size of the alveolus. Okay. So it is always better to retain a tooth structure, a missing tooth structure with implant. So now moving on to the last mail. It's from uh, Sinsir Abu Dhabi. I'm nervous about dental work and what can you do for me? We have a set of uh, protocols for an anxious patient. It is called, you know, you can start from, you know, hypnosis, pre-medication, music therapy, and there are, you know, even the hypnoanesthesia also was practiced. It is all about reaffirming the patient for a dental procedure. So you can manage that, you know, stress and tension by giving even drugs also you can be given. The other question that he, he has asked is, what is the typical recovery time after having a wisdom tooth extracted? Normally it takes two to three days for subsiding the initial swelling and edema. And usually we give sutures and we recall the patient after six or seven days for a suture removal. And sometimes we can give absorbable sutures also. Mm. So it's normally, you know, you can say maximum seven days. Why must I have an escort with me when I undergo fourth sedation or general anesthesia? See, general anesthesia is something like it is usually done in a, a patient is getting admitted in a hospital and you definitely have to sign, you have to, it is an, uh, you definitely need to have an assistant uh, to take care of the patient. Yes. So naturally it is an assistant or a uh, bystander is required for any surgical procedure planned under general anesthesia. The last question that he has asked is, if I am not in pain, why do I need to return for a follow-up appointment? And why is your practice considered state of the art? See, usually when we do any surgical procedure, it is always better to recall the patient, a person back and review whether the healing is satisfactory, whether it is going for any secondary infection. So it can, you know, any surgical procedure yes. can uh, cause some amount of complication like secondary infections and, um, you know, there is a delay in healing. So it is just to reaffirm and, you know, to confirm whether, you know, the healing process and the recovery if is uneventful. Why is your practice considered state of the art? So usually for any procedures, when we have an expert hand for a I am talking in terms of any surgical procedure because our land maxillofacial surgeons are, you know, they are really trained for any surgical procedure in oral cavity and the maxillofacial region. And you need to have a very good setup because probably during our course of post-graduation, we need to learn about a lot of this, uh, you know, sterilization protocols, uh, all the anesthetic techniques and the anatomical landmark in a better way. So when you, when you are, you know, uh, going to a specialist for any sort of treatment, naturally, you know, the, the result of the treatment outcome also would be always better.
Dr. Thanks a lot for being a part of our program. So that was Dr. Arun George with us. Until we meet next time, this is me, Naina, signing off. Take care.